In this video, we are going to discuss capacitor. Capacitor is a little like a battery, but works completely differently. Alright, so what exactly is battery and what exactly is capacitor? A battery is an electric device that converts chemical energy into electrical energy, whereas a capacitor is a two-terminal electrical device that can store energy in the form of electric charge. So in a simple term, it can define a capacitor as a device that can store electric charge. And that is very simple. All right, we have types of capacitor. And in these types of capacitor, we want to see how we can group it. But in simple term, you could just say that capacitor have two major types and the first one is the fixed capacitor and the second one is the variable capacitor so every other types of capacitor you would have seen flows under this for example the fixed capacitor has in it a uh, ceramic capacitor the paper and film capacitor we have the super electro uh, super capacitor yes electrolytic capacitor silver mica capacitor air gap capacitor all of these falls under fixed capacitor which is also subdivided into what we call the polarized and non-polarized capacitor so like we said fixed capacitor its value is always fixed and then for the variable uh, the, uh, the 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 values are always adjustable all right so but then let's not go down into the history or the stories about this but we can just if we see some symbolic representation of fixed capacitor it's just like something like this you just have a kind of this representation this symbolizes fixed and then for variable we use almost the same thing but the difference is that we we'll just have a kind of stroke on it and this is for variable capacitor all right but in simple term you can just have the symbol of capacitor to be like this it has two parallel plates and this is what we'll be using mostly for the major work we've been, we're going to do in this particular topic so this is the symbol of capacitor and you may want to know the unit for which capacitor is measured Capac the major unit of capacitor is the farad so the unit the standard internet the international unit of a capacitor is the farad but this farad is used huge in the sense that when you want to measure some quantities, you want to use some sub uh, sub unit of capacitor for those measurements. Okay, so some of these uh, sub uh, units are the millifarad. We have what we call the millifarad. I'll be use small letter M millifarad. Let's spell it out. And this millifarad means 10 to the power of minus 3 farad. That's what milli stands for. We also have what we call the microfarad. I'm placing it in the symbolic form. This is for microfarad. And this microfarad is means 10 to the power of 6 farad we have another one called the the nano farad nano stands for represent 9 so nano farad is 10 to the power of minus 9 farad we have the pico farad the pico farad is 10 to the power of minus 12 we also have the one we call the femtofarad and this femtofarad is is 10 to the power of minus 15 
All right, so these are the sub units of capacitor. Rather than having it as farad, it can still have the sub units of capacitor. All right, so essentially, what are we talking about when we say that capacitor is a device that stores electric charge? Of course, when you think of it, you will notice that it consists of let's use diagram alongside to explain this it consists of two electrical conductors that are separated by a distance so let's have a source voltage here all right and in this case we have the capacitors the plates of the capacitors of course you can be able to distinguish this from a battery or a voltage here the plates are equal but you can see here the way i represent this battery or source voltage or potential difference you can see that this is a longer which is positive and this is short whereas this they are equal so what essentially are we talking about we are saying that it consists of two electrical conductors that are separated by a distance all right the space between these conductors you're seeing may be filled by a vacuum or with an insulating material this space you're seeing here and we feel with an insulating material which we can call it a dielectric dielectric is an insulating material that is to say it does not conduct electricity all right dielectric all right so this particular point this position this is apparently telling us that uh, after a point the capacitor holds a maximum amount of charge as per its capacitance with respect to the voltage so we are saying that by the time this voltage supplies to this through the circuit and gets to this point you will notice that because of this space in this plate of capacitor, this is plate one, this plate one, and this is plate two. You notice that this positive we accumulate in the positive side when it gets to this position because it cannot cross over to this place. Here is an insulating material. There could be paper, uh, which is a dielectric material this positive cannot come over to this particular position similarly negative can go over so here will be accumulated with negative the same way this will be accumulated with a positive and this creates what you call an electric field within this region all right so what we are saying of course is that the potential difference at this point will be directly proportional the potential difference will be directly proportional to to the electric field so in that case we'll have that q is directly proportional to v all right so if this holds we can make this equation one you're gonna swear say that by the time you change the proportionality sign you introduce an equal sign you have c multiplied by v where the c is what we call the capacitance and then you can as well make the C the subject of the relation. And if you do that, you have the charge dividing the voltage. And the ability of the capacitor to store charges is what we call this capacitance. So, and we have the expression to be this. You can as well make the voltage the subject of the relation. And that will stand to be the charge dividing the capacitance. And this is equation 3, equation 4. So this expression will be useful. If you take them so seriously all right after that we also understand that the parallel the capacitance of a parallel plate also have another formula and that formula comes when we have like in this case where we have two parallel plates capacitor like this let me redraw the circuit and in these two parallel plates it has which is connected to source voltage so at this point 
of course here is the dielectric material dielectric and this is the voltage and in between these two plates is we call we call it the distance distance between these two plates is the distance so from there we have an expression that uh, also uh, that the factors like when we ask what is the factors that affects the capacitance of this capacitor you need to consider the area of this split the area of the plate is one of the factor the distance between the dielectric material and also the nature of the splits so these are the three factors that affects the capacitance of the capacitor the area of the plates the distance between the dielectric materials and also the nature of the plates and this will form an expression that c is equal to we have this epsilon multiplies by a all over d uh, this is equation 5 take note of this equation it will also be useful in solving problems again another thing i want to establish is the work done or the energy stored in a capacitor we can use u as the energy stored or we can use w as energy store the work done or we can use e as the energy store any of these symbols are allowed so the energy stored in a capacitor is given by the expression 1 over 2 c v squared all these expressions are derivable but i just need to state them so you be able to know how to use them to solve problems all right so having understood this expression or this is the capacitance of the capacitor and this is the source voltage and the voltage is squared so either i can use w see some cases they say w is equal to half cv squared or you can use E or you can use U that is for the work done or energy stored in a capacitor of course we also understand that capacitors are connected in parallel and also in series so we want to see the formula for capacitors that are connected in parallel and that which is connected in series for parallel connection parallel connection of capacitor The formula for that is the C equivalent equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus up to C script N, depending on the number of capacitors that are present in this circuit diagram. All right, so this is the formula, take note of it. But for serial connection of capacitor, let's put it as serial connection of capacitor we have the formula to be 1 over C equivalent or you can say C total C total or C equivalent all the same equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 let's say we have just three uh, just three capacitance or capacitors in the circuit c3 but when you are not setting about the number of capacitor maybe in the course of the formula we can just add plus dot 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 plus one over cn so that when you have up to four to five capacitors you can also elongate this expression of course this particular formula can also be written in this form you have one over c equivalent equal to the LCM to these three parameters we have in C1, C2, C3 is C1, C2, C3. So that is the LCM for these three parameters. So if the whole of this divide by C, it says that C can cancel out. That is if C goes into this, C will cancel out. So C2, C3 will multiply by 1. And what we have here is C2, C3 plus this goes into this meaning that this will cancel out with this c1 c3 will multiply by one you still have c1 c3 
plus this will also go into this this c3 will multiply we cancel out with c3 what will be left is c1 c2 that multiplies by this we have c1 c2 okay of course because we want to have the equivalent capacitance you have to invert this if you take this upside down if you flip one over c equivalent you're flipping the left hand side you have to flip the right hand side all right so when we flip this this will goes to this c equivalent to go to the numerator one comes to the denominator which is c equivalent over one and over one is the same thing as c equivalent is equal to also flip this so that we have c1 c2 c3 all over c2 c3 plus c1 c3 plus c1 c2 so take note of this formula either you can use this or you can use the second one to solve problems when you are asked to calculate for the serial uh, the capacitance the equivalent capacitance of a serial connection all right so this will be helpful and then in the next video we we'll want to solve problems using all the formulas that we have establish in this uh, video tutorial so if this makes a lot of sense to you or if this if you found this video helpful please hit the subscribe button